お前はもう死んでいる何In the tradition of Home Alone,、yeah. uh, uh, clearly a ripoff. When his mom said to go outside and play, she didn't exactly have this in mind. Well, that sounds, that sounds like, like a porno. It could be quite a different <laughs> film.、Uh, meet Stuart, an 11 year old computer genius who plots to outsmart a group of thugs and single handedly save his family from run on sentences. Uh, when his father receives a top secret fax, Stuart is the first to recognize its importance. So、okay. there's going to be technology involved in this film. 1990s technology. I, I don't care at all. <laughs> <laughs> so Stuart, Stuart's father receives a top secret fax, and then Stuart is the first to recognize its, its importance, I guess because he's a computer genius. At, at what point does he get left home alone? Well, I don't think that. that so they're, they're, the movie has nothing in common with the movie, yet the box、well, implies it does. It's in the、It's、tradition of Home Alone. There's、okay. two wacky criminals that have some sort of plan, and he's going to foil them by using kid smarts. Yeah.、Uh, so that's the premise. And then they try and get him to crack the code, and he squirts them with a, with a super soaker. And apparently they beat him up because he has blood on his face in the back of the box. So, I really I can't wait for that sequence. Now, if, if this movie like, takes a dark turn and there's like, a torture scene with a、yeah. kid tied to a chair,、yeah. I will love it. It is rated PG 13. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's very possible. Nine, nine, nine. Oh, oh my God! God. This is confirmed not a children's movie. <laughs> you know, Dad, you should really take a look at today's faxes. You got something from Uncle Steven, and you're familiar with what he's working on, right? 28 takes, and that was the best one? <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine children watching this. Yeah.、Uh, that, they wouldn't have made it this far. No. no. We're only 11 minutes in. This is the movie you put on when it's time to go down for a nap. <laughs> Beautiful country, isn't it? Yeah, if you like corn. I think they have an acting school around here. Everyone in this movie talks like this. I wanted to be a Dave. Sir, I just thought it imperative to tell you what I saw. I believe. The premise of this seemed to be kid can shape shift. But in the movie, 12 other things happen. He、yeah. shape shifts.、Yeah. He's also a spy. It could be kid spy. Huh, kid spy.、Yeah. I gotta save my parents from a, a Romanian prison, and I'm gonna use all my spy gear to do it. That's a whole movie in itself. Shape shifter is a whole movie in itself. Magical、uh, glass harmonica from 300 years ago that has magical powers is a movie in itself.、Yeah. Meteorite from space. That comes from the future and contains a digital lady.、Uh, that's in the movie too, and, and that's an entirely different movie too. So there's five different movies crammed into one, and it's, none of it makes sense. Again, it would make sense as a mini series. Sure. So you gotta, you gotta focus on, on a premise, you gotta focus on an idea and stick to it. And Shapeshifter, ironically, Shapeshifter sha shapes. Ironically, shape shifter shifts shapes while Sandy sells seashells by the seashore. You gotta do it again. No, that's perfect. <laughs> I need a glass harmonica and I need privacy. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I heard、I'll, that?、Uh, I'll be back down here in like 15 minutes. And a bottle of lubricants. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody birthday. Couldn't be more excited. Julie Brown from MTV is in it.、Mm -hmm, downtown. Not downtown Julie. Oh, not downtown.、Brown. The other Julie Brown. The goofy redhead Julie Brown. Okay. The nightmare begins with the kids next door. Yes. This is about little kids that murder people violently.、Uh, directed by Ed Hunt. Sure. I love that guy. His work. <laughs> His work. I take all of my film knowledge from Ed Hunt. Remember him? In 1970, three children were born during the height of a total eclipse of Saturn, the planet governing emotion. 
I, yeah. Ten years later, these seemingly innocent children have become heartless killers. What happens when a teenage girl and her younger brother stumble upon the horrible truth? But this, this kid here, he looks pretty threatening, right? Uh, his Rick Moranis impression is pretty killer. So finally, we have, I don't know, maybe this is about you. I guess we'll find out. It's called Psycho from Texas. I'm glad that, I'm glad you found this film. Uh, because that's actually me. The, oh. When I was blonde and older and naked. Well, I do like to, when I'm in Texas, I usually go topless. Okay. That's the thing about me, and I feather my bangs. Is that a Texas thing, or is that just you? <laughs> Only if you're psycho. <laughs> Only psychos in okay. Texas. Okay. It's like a marker to the rest of Texas, like where your mental standing is. So they're like, oh, hey, look, psycho. Right. Okay. Well, it's a shocker, psycho it in Texas. It is a shocker. Um, not the shocker. No. Just a shocker. Uh, but this is brought to us by the good people at Paragon Video, which is the mark of quality. They one... did a lot of work with Ed Hunt, didn't they? It's possible, yeah. But there's one image on the back. This is all we get. I, I don't even know what's happening here. Is, is, he's uh, getting think... something shoved in his neck, I think. Ronald McDonald is getting spearfished in the face. Okay. Sort of. Okay. Well, if that happens in the movie, then <laughs> this whole day will be worth it. What does the back say? Uh, he was a stranger and a killer. There's no punctuation at the end of that, so I, I'm going to assume that goes on okay. for the rest of the sentence. So, he was a stranger, yep. and a killer, a quiet southern town, is disrupted <laughs> by the kidnapping of a wealthy oil man and a series of needless, insane killings. Good morning. I'll have a hamburger. Pull the onions, a cup of coffee. Mm. What? <laughs> what are you doing tonight? What? <laughs> Whatever it is, it won't be with you. Whoa! Whoa! Holy crap! Whoa. What? That's <laughs> what now that's a transition. <laughs> <laughs> talk about the peep show let's yeah. let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about the the one of the best scenes in the film the the uh the childhood peep show scene yeah where the the little girl the tiny woman she uh her older sister is julie brown and she, not downtown julie not brown. downtown julie brown the, the other julie brown and there's a hole uh in her closet and the little girl charges her little pervert friends a quarter each to watch her sister undress. All right, ma'am. What if she catches us? No way. All her brains are in her bra. And apparently she does this at the exact same time every day. Right. She puts on the same song. And get, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I get undressed and dance at the exact same time every day. Do you use a boa? I, you know, not a boa uh, because I'm a guy, so I just use some gym socks tied together. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared to go out. It. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh no. I can't say no. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. What a this creepy That's when we suddenly got genuinely scary. This is insane. Why is this happening? Is is this the director? <laughs> the camera's facing the wrong way. The actual scene. <laughs> on the other side of the camera. Yes. And then they cut back to them running some more. Oh, this oh, just happening. Breaking news what is this? from Rich yeah. Evans in oh, our. Hold on. We have breaking news coming from Rich Evans okay. live in the other room. Rich Evans did some research on Crazy Fat Ethel, and he discovered. Crazy Fat Ethel 1, originally titled Criminally Insane, 61 minutes long, with a budget of $30,000. Wow. Remade this year. 
this year, <laughs> but shelved after the top investor died in June of this year. Wow. Rich Evans, this is this is shocking news. <laughs> back, I'm, I'm sorry. So anyway, back now to... Now back to psych... I lost my shoe. <laughs> What? Found it. I found it. You guys made breaking news. <laughs> Jillian just found her shoe. Jillian's shoe was lost, but then it was found. We'll report to you with more information. <laughs> Which, by the way, is more than what happens in Psycho from Texas. That's true. Oh my god. This breaking just in. News. Breaking oh news from Rich Evans. Jesus god. In our research department. Director, in quotation marks, Nick Millard. Millard? Nick Millard. Directed Crazy Fat Ethel under the name Nick Phillips. Oh. He directed many hit films such as <clears throat> Satan's Black Wedding, <laughs> Wendy's Naughty Night. Oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Mike. Mike can't. Uh, Mike, I'm sorry. I'm having a moment. My, my, my colleague is a little under duress at the moment. Mm. Um, so Satan's Black Wedding, Wendy's Naughty Night. <laughs> okay. Oh no. I feel like I can do this. You can do this. I have faith in you. Okay. Satan's Black Wedding, Wendy's Naughty Night, Fire in Her Bed, and Sex Weirdo. <laughs> oh, Sex Weirdo. I know that film. <laughs> Everyone's awkward. Yeah. Except for. The director, I guess. Who was yeah. furiously masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Except for the director and maybe Rich Evans. <laughs> Who was furiously masturbating. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Well, I guess it's time to recap all three of these films. And to, well, oh, oh my god, we have, we have a, a special, breaking update from A breaking Rich news report from Rich Evans. Wow. From the news desk. I guess these are other titles from director of... Uh, um, Nick Millard. Nick Phillips? Nick Phillips. Yeah. Nick That's Phillips his fake Millard. name, is Nick oh. Phillips. Super Sensual. <laughs> vicious Blondes. Vicious Blondes. Vicious Blondes. Vicious blondes. blondes. Yeah, okay. As in blondes that are vicious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Continue. Confessions of a Dirty Pair. <laughs> A dirty a what? what? A parrot? <laughs> pear, pear. Not a parrot, but a pear? Pear? Fuck you! <laughs> like a pair of, like, people. Like, oh, I got it <laughs> like, like a, a fruit. fruit. Uh -huh. right, his next, his fourth film, please, on the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's continue. <laughs> Sappho 60. <laughs> I can't. Okay, okay. Sappho 68. Darling, are you bored of men? Kept. And I'll give you these. Dre, please Kept. finish the list. Kept. <laughs> uh, uh, Nympho. Right. It's obvious enough. Um, the prequel to Sex Weirdo. <laughs> yeah. The erotic Mr. Rose. <laughs> his name's Mr. Rose, and he's erotic. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the slut. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, his other movie titles were subtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the director real quick. Len, Len Kabazinski is, he's a visionary genius of, of schlock movies. Uh, he's a personal inspiration and hero of mine. Yeah. And, and he's a martial arts master. And he makes horror movies with his friends. And we watch them. And we watch them, and we, we love them. There he there is. is! Yay! Oh, is. Happy the, birthday, Len! <laughs> the master of cinema. Four women in the woods alone. Unprepared, unsuspecting, and hunted. A girl's camping weekend for four friends quickly turns to a terror hell ride like no other when they encounter a stranger in the woods and are in turn forced to fight for their lives against the rich and privileged who hunt humans for sport. Oh my god, that's one long sentence. No, no punctuation, There's I'm not surprised. There's no punctuation at all. There is a period at the end, but the whole paragraph is that one sentence. Starring Playboy Centerfold, Lisa uh, Neeld? N-E-E-L-D? I don't know. That's an unfortunate name Neeld. for someone in the adult oh, entertainment yeah. industry. Yeah. 
star of CW Network show slash Lisa Need uh, star of CW Networks <laughs> star of CW Network show slash Lisa Neal's VIP. Okay, I'm going to read the, the second sentence of the back of the box now. Yeah, this is taking so long, it's time for my pawn far. I'd say that was rough and pawn. You been here before? No. I was just saying. None of us have been here, right? I don't oh maybe, God. maybe if a plane goes by, you should do a second take. <laughs> How about you get some wides? In a hurry, Carrie. Oh How my god, I feel claustrophobic. <laughs> and, and dizzy. You're in the woods and you feel claustrophobic. And dizzy. Oh. His films are just terrible. They, they are just <laughs> terrible. Um, yeah, they, they, they are amazing. And, and I cannot wait to watch this. We've been waiting almost a year for this yep. to come out on DVD. Um, so I hope it doesn't disappoint. We'll or see. rather, I hope it does. I said stay back! <laughs> yeah. There's the line. Yeah. It's a sad day for all of us. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> oh, she got... Actually, we should mention, with the old lady getting pulled out of the TV, the best part of that is that it shows the aftermath of it, with the poor geek having to vacuum up all this ash. I think the movie itself is haunted. Oh. It is. How else do you explain the showbiz pizza bear? Oh my god, we haven't talked about the showbiz pizza that, bear. That is the most important element of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Explain, Rich. So after Mike saved my precious heirloom, Yeah. And it had a picture of me with this birthday boy shirt and the showbiz pizza next to the showbiz pizza bear. Yeah. Here, 30 years to the day later, not only am I wearing the same shirt, but we're watching this movie and there he is. Yes, being carried out on a stretcher. <laughs> showbiz pizza, pizza bear, bear. No. dead. Ah, what the <laughs> fuck? Oh, oh my God. It's a Halloween miracle! <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> the showbiz pizza bear dead! There is some context in that it's a Halloween party, and this could potentially be someone's Halloween costume, but nobody in the history of humanity has ever dressed up as the showbiz pizza bear for Halloween. It, it, it's possible that someone on the cast or crew had access to the showbiz pizza bear costume. <laughs> I think the tape is haunted. Okay. And something horrible is going to happen to me by the time the night is do, over. Do you think if we rewatch that movie, that bear will not be there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've been reunited. It's all these <laughs> Take the birthday boy. <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> so yeah, there's going to be a green mist floating down your pants tonight, Rich Evans. <laughs> So stupid. Oh, I can see the string. Yeah. Thanks, Blu-ray. Right. So. What? White on white. Oh, this is a wonderful credit card. Ninja. 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 Can't we just know that they drove there? That was the best comment ever. Jesse says, can't we just know that they drove there? <laughs> so every scene, it's a car pulling yeah. up. Yeah, there's lots of that. Like, we can, can assume that they got there somehow. You, you could have started at that shot. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no. 
dragon that I oh, have. No. Oh, that's that is awesome. in yellow. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Plus, right there. Hey! Oh! Hey! What's he doing to stand So, there? so then he's just gonna fuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna steal their keys. Oh. He's gonna annoy them until they move. <laughs> She plays an aerobic instructor who teaches one class, but is also a telephone line repairman. That's her full-time job. Who gets possessed by the spirit of a demon. Who got ninja. shot 35,000 times. <laughs> a ninja who has a grudge against golf courses. <laughs> uh, <laughs> golf course patrons. Um, uh, and, uh, gets killed and then gives her her sword, which comes out of her closet on a string. <laughs> and then she wants to get revenge on the cops who are just doing their job. And then another ninja shows up, a real life ninja. Shokusaki. Uh, who has an eye patch, because uh, someone threw a ninja star in his eye. Mm -hmm. He shows up, hunting down the, the ninja. Did you say cunting down? I may have. <laughs> you, you did, you did say cunting down, um, yes. The Freudian slip, perhaps, I don't know. <laughs> um, but he, he, com he comes into the country to, to hunt down uh, the, the, the ninja, who is now in the body of the lady. And then... Uh, some things happen, and then the movie ends. <laughs> you, you glossed over everything. You missed over everything that makes everything this movie great. Important. I'll help you, sweetheart. All right. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. She pulls her face away, all his hairs on her face. <laughs> oh, no. oh, Is she no. going to kill him in that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, she's, she's a ninja sword. now? That's it. I think oh, no. Son of a bitch. God damn um, it. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> that, that, just, that just sucks. White people. <laughs> See how easy it was? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> I'm just gonna dance through all my <laughs> troubles <laughs> away. <It's> away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, this is so awesome. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. There's nothing more rock than V8. V8? <laughs> right, V8. Is this the big showdown? No. Maybe. No, there's another half an hour or so. Oh, God <laughs> So, Lethal Ninja, who is neither lethal nor a ninja, nope. but he is an army of one, according to the, the packaging here. Rich, give us a plot synopsis of Lethal Ninja. Okay. Lethal Ninja is about a crime-ridden city, and the judge, who is trying to clean the city up, takes a handwritten business card that says, hire me, calls a guy with a perm, and the guy with the perm is going to clean up crime in the city by mildly annoying the city's criminals. He's going to run past them in a, in a comical wide shot and steal their car keys and run away, and he's going to sneak up behind them and blow away their cocaine. The kid did that. And then he's going to kill a guy with his butt by stabbing him in the butt. The little kid did maybe, that. maybe kill the guy by stabbing him in the butt. We're not sure. And and then he's gonna fight his childhood friend, who he played basketball with. And then the friend's dad is going to kill one of the judge's twenty adopted children. <laughs> After slapping her during sex while thinking about his son. That's weird. And then he's going to die at the end by falling three feet. Under a ceramic horse. <laughs> no, wait. That is really good. That's good. That, that, really that, was, that was what happened. Oh, good job. Good job. Oh, you right there. Everybody. Good job. guy, our lead hero, mm -hmm. he keeps him. handing out cards to people that say, For Hire? Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is the number. alternate title for the movie. The card doesn't specify 
what his service is yeah. for hire. It just says for hire. Right. Well, that's why nobody called the number. <laughs> right. The judge did eventually. For all they knew, it was an advertisement for phone sex. <laughs> The burial of the one adopted daughter, where there is no, the funeral, there, it's the burial scene, there's no grave. She's no. just in her casket on a lawn. It's, it's just a casket just sitting, sitting in a park. Lawn. Right, it's just a casket in a park. <laughs> there, so. Oh, yeah. Wait, 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 okay, there's a chain of, there's a chain of events that, that leads into chaos. Yeah. First, it starts with Millie, Millie Vanilli's dad, yeah. who's, who's having sex with the judge's daughter, and that's like a big reveal. Son, well, while, while he's having sex with the daughter, he's crossing his eyes yeah. in bed while thinking about his son, Millie Vanilli, and he keeps saying, Obey me! Obey me. Obey me! And that's, that's a scene in the movie that happened. But it's, it's, it's Ringo Starr and uh, Gene Simmons' love child who right. decides to put on work safety goggles, yeah. who shoots the Chinese adopted daughter of the judge. The piano player gets shot in the head. He has to save the singer yes. at the yeah. Sweet 16 the birthday Indian party. Adopted the Indian yeah. adopted yeah. daughter. Yeah. Yeah. But they all go to the funeral of the Chinese girl who gets yeah. shot in the head by Gene the love Simmons. child of Gene Simmons and, and Ringo Starr, right. who decides to wear work safety goggles. And oh, Dave Coulier shows up in drag to yes. commit some kind of murder. I don't know who. Yeah, who's he trying to kill in that Millie scene? Vanilli. Because he runs up to Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli was kind of hiding, though, yeah. in that scene, though. He Millie shoots Vanilli. at yeah. Millie Vanilli. Right. Millie Vanilli tries to make amends with That's the first with, person he shoots with at, yeah. Perm Ninja. Yeah. But he gets shot in the side by Dave Coulier in drag. <laughs> <laughs> He's not fooling anyone. He's not fooling anyone. It's the worst disguise in the world. Yeah. It's, it's... And then somebody in a wheelchair rolls up and attacks Dave Coulier in drag. That was St. Elmo. 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 Because... St. Elmo. <laughs> Elmo was shot. It, let's backtrack and then we'll, it's not getting... St. Elmo though. got stabbed in the buttocks with Sia blades. <laughs> no, 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 no. At the pool, he was shot. Yeah. And the kid revived him by rubbing his groin. And he was okay. <laughs> And the paramedics with the cooler, a beer cooler, <laughs> as the kid's rubbing his groin. It's also right around this time that Millie Vanilli, after being shot in the stomach, he just gets up. He's got an exit wound and everything, but he's just, he's oh, just No, then he goes up to his dad, and his dad just sort of smacks him around a bit, because he's disappointed in him, while he's, like, dying from a gunshot wound. You idiot, you got shot. Uh. This is all within a 10 minute span. We're making this movie sound so much more exciting than I know. it is. And, and then you get to the last scene, which takes place in the dance club. But now the dance club is an auction hall. All of the valuable auction items, which came from like a dollar store and they're made out of plaster, are sitting on a folding table that's covered with a dirty tablecloth. Oh, what's, yeah. what's a table? <laughs> table? Table. Folding table. Oh, okay. <laughs> the evil mayor and, and Gene Simmons wanted that piece of art because... <laughs> 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 Evil Mayor and Gene Simmons wanted that piece of art because it had all the drugs in it. Was oh, that it? Really? I, <laughs> what? How the fuck did you get this? Yeah. No! <laughs> it's in the movie, Pitch! What? After he fell on the thing, there's little bags of drugs all over Oh, yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's why he was bidding on it? Oh, so okay. that's why they're bidding on it, and then Evil Mayor, that's why Evil Mayor hit Gene Simmons with his cane, because Gene Simmons outbid him for it, even though it was Evil But Mayor. as he jumped to his death and committed suicide, that makes the Lethal Ninja eat where even more non-lethal yeah. because we don't even he get the payoff is, is you know even if we liked the hero which i don't think any of us do mm -hmm. but if we did you want that payoff of him winning at the end or doing something was good. he even there <laughs> <laughs> they had this awkward fight scene yeah, where they go up fight. the steps they, they go up the steps and they're making their way down the walkway and then they make their way back down the walkway the other way and then for no reason whatsoever gene simmons jumps off a three-foot drop, lands in a ceramic horse, and dies. <laughs> yeah. And that's the end and, of the and that's the end of the, His son comes up, I guess. It... <laughs> and then, but then out of nowhere, all of... Right. 
all of the adopted kids come into the room. <laughs> <They're all laughs> the Look at the dead body. <laughs> Look at the drugs. And it's the drug dealer, Gene Simmons guy, who the kids have no relation no. to, but yet they're there for some oh, reason. Yeah. The kids are there. Yeah. These are the worst fucking parents <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. Look at this. He's, he's, he's dropping five uh, feet. Oh, no. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's good to see you, Colonel. You look pretty good for having spent 25 years in that place. Hey! Stop talking and start driving, bitch. Mm. <laughs> Yo, that's my Colonel! <laughs> it's gonna be the easiest money I've ever made. You think so? No. I know so. Oh my god. Oh my god, what? <laughs> that happened so slow, I didn't have time to react. <laughs> <laughs> well, the interesting thing is the movie looks pretty good. The sound editing and sound mixing is fucking terrible, like shockingly bad, where there is just those hard cuts on the audio that you see in like an amateur movie. I'm not gonna kill you. You're not. Not yet anyway. Fuck you. Now that's a thought. The dialogue in this movie is so far away. Like, there's lots of attempts at, at, at funny, witty action movie one-liners. Sort of. They are so far away from anything clever or witty. Have a nice day. What? <laughs> Too late. Why? <laughs> These catchphrases are the worst. They go so far back around that they pass nomedy. And come yeah, back around to yeah. Incredible. This movie, this movie passed the nominee scale. <laughs> I would say. You're dead. Not as dead as you're going to be. Uh, not only is uh, Danzen back, of course, as the hero. Also, we have Colonel Hogan back. But then we have uh, Black Tank Top Guy is back. But he got, if you recall, he got beat to death with his own arm in the last movie. You really do look just like your brother. Some say so. Andy, he also gets beaten to death with his own arm because this movie is completely different. <laughs> <laughs> this is my problem. Well, well, let's get to that. Okay, so right. the movie's exactly the same, beat for beat, just replace uh, Cameron Mitchell with hackers, but we get to the ending and that's when they start to subvert your expectations. First off, you're getting exactly to the point where uh, Tank Top Guy just straight up fucking murders uh, Danton's wife for no reason. No! Please, don't kill me, I don't want it. No! But just as he's about to do that again, there's a shot from behind Danton and it turns out to be Danton's little kid. No! Lil who, Danton who shows up. Who wasn't in the woods before that? <laughs> no, but remember, <laughs> he wasn't remember, in the woods. The hackers show up. Say we actually find Danton. What then? Help him out, I guess. And how are we supposed to do that? It's not like we have guns or anything, you know. Danton. Hey, that's Hogan. Oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> So it's clear that the hackers have, for some reason, they keep coming back. <laughs> they they, they keep promised, coming back to the they, woods where everyone gets no shot. Help. They wanted to help Denton by bringing his small child into harm's way. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. And then, oh, no! That's amazing! <laughs> his son to murder people. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> this movie is like, it's like cathartic. Yeah. And when you watch the first movie and you're like, what? The wife's dead? Oh, what? The guy, bad guy got away? This movie's like, we're gonna correct all of that. <laughs> Basically, if you, if you go back and watch that episode of, of Best of the Worst, 
where we're talking about like, I can't believe they did this thing and this thing and this thing, and we thought it was gonna be this way and this way. This one is that way. Yeah, yeah. 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 It is fixed the whole- And it's a much better ending yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Absolutely. Well, with you, with you, one, one exception. Candy girl gets killed. Oh, oh damn. True, True that. that. <laughs> next up. Mm -hmm. Oh, Josh. next up. Manners. Who oh, needs them? Oh, God. This video? Oh. This is the dude. Have we watched well, this one? Oh, yeah, this one? yeah. We did? What? Watch this one? Oh, just shut up. Oh. Oh. You're gonna learn something. So excuse me. I'm not done talking. The video that makes learning man. <laughs> 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 Anyways, you're talking about manners. Uh, it's a 20-minute video. That's very. That's actually really thoughtful that they pointed that out. A video about manners needs to be 16 hours long. <laughs> Have you seen some of the people today? <laughs> What's the last tape? Thank God it's the last tape. What's the last tape, Mike? Uh, last tape. Surviving Edged Weapon. Wow. <laughs> uh, the best police training film ever made. Ooh. How to defeat today's fastest growing threat. Intended for law enforcement only. So if we get this one, only cops get to watch. Yeah. How we, do we, we even have to, obtain this? We have to leave the room if it's on. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a member of the law enforcement. I know. Look at this. Look at the look at the work on this edged weapons with the cut. It's like a it's like a Guns N' Roses album cover or something. Yeah. That's some good shit. Edged weapons. Amazing. Simply amazing. Well, Josh. You want to give this uh, wheel a spin? Sure. Here we go. Oh my God, the wheel is spinning. Oh boy. Our oh. fate is being decided. Oh boy. Oh. Oh God. Oh, oh, God. oh. oh my God. Oh. Manners. Who needs them? Do you? Refreshments, please. She said, please. Remind me, boy, of the proper way to eat grapes. What? With your mouth. The proper way to eat grapes is with your fingers. Oh, queen. You like that pill? Is there a different way to eat grapes? See? Cleopatra paid close attention to her manners. Well, she was a queen, after all. Why are you telling me that? Why was that girl holding a fish? <laughs> I have so many questions. <laughs> Please. Oh, 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 from the femoral artery in the groin to the arms, ribs, chest, the neck, and back. Milwaukee cops versus ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> the training video. <laughs> the crucial tactic for your buying time to assess a suspect and to protect yourself against an edged weapon. See, that's the oh, oh, oh. oh, this is like a knife. Oh, yeah. This is my nightmare. <laughs> this video is a big pile of crap. It's useless. It's, it's a big piece of shit. But it redeems itself at the very end when we break out into a rap. If your meat is giving you strife, just cut it, cut it, cut it with a knife. The rap. Let's just jump to the rap. Fuck well, the there's rest there's nothing else to talk no, about. We gotta it, get to the rap. It. We gotta like, get to this. The most awkward, embarrassing rap that has ever existed, and that's saying something considering the era that this comes from. Yeah. Try, how they get into it again? They just like, we're done. Uh, I'm done telling you about my dream and playing this game. Let's watch a video. I'm bored with this game. Let's watch a video. Yeah. It's just this video again. Oh. Uh, Ah. Oh, oh. Oh my god. What? Um, Playing a giant knife? Uh, the man from your dreams is in the video! Oh, It's oh. possessed! <laughs> what is that? 
It's a butter knife. It sounds like a giant butter knife. It's eight o'clock and we're ready to rock. Get your elbows off the table. Put your napkin in your lap. <laughs> Stop playing with your food and join us in our rap. With them in it and George Washington and it's it's dreams within dreams. It's, it's the it's the last season of Twin Peaks. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Was manners who needs them a David Lynch film? It kind of feels like it with all the talk of dreams. It makes yeah, more it sense is. than Dune. <laughs> <laughs> you are not wrong, sir. You are not wrong. But but let's really let's focus on who's rapping. And, and the man, the man behind the voice, as they say. Check it out. This is how the table's set. Knives on the right, forks on the left. Spoons how embarrassing. Plates in the middle, and the glasses to the right. Utensils are used from outside in. Remember this. Can we find and embarrass this man? <laughs> <laughs> don't slurp your soup. Don't reach and grab. When you butter your bread, just take a little dab. <laughs> I know what song is ending this video. <laughs> I want to shake his hand for having the courage to do that in front of a camera. And don't be a drip, wipe your lips, and mind your manners, man. Well, he was probably like 20. Know and now, now he's he's 45, <laughs> and he has a wife and kids, and his kids are in college. And this is like nobody school. in the family knows about nobody this video. Knows. And now... A bunch of slobs from Wisconsin are, are talking about him, and now he's dead, and his and his wife and and his grieving children are at the funeral, and you're there in your Pac-Man shirt. <laughs> uh, I think really you just show up with like an iPad Check with the rap loaded up. Yeah, and you just, just go up to it. You can dance no. through the funeral. <laughs> don't don't talk to anybody. Just show up to the door with that already playing and just <laughs> dance my way. <laughs> But you definitely, you definitely want to put some razor blades in your hat. Oh yeah. Oh, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> yes. Hopefully it's an open casket, so you could throw some MC Hammer plates on, it, on, it, on his corpse. Some, some, some styrofoam silverware. <laughs> Comically oversized styrofoam forks. Yeah. And just say, this is your husband's legacy, man. <laughs> this is your husband's and and your father's as you look to his children. This is his legacy. It's an embarrassing rap video. Now part of Best of the Worst episode 128. <laughs> or whatever episode this Or whatever is. episode, yeah. The last one. <laughs> and as they're lowering the casket into the earth, you take a giant dump on it. <laughs> it while wearing your Pac-Man shirt, but no pants. <laughs> and then you say to his daughters, Manners, who needs them? <laughs> And then, and then say, you just run away. You say, Evan, Evan's out. <laughs> I'm God. so sorry. Why do you hate me so much? No, I'm, I'm, this is your liberation. This is a beautiful moment. For he you. doesn't hate you. He hates George Washington. I hate George Washington. We all do. And this man who, who's rap embarrassed the nation. When the salad comes around, don't look like a dork. Reach to the left and grab the small fork. <laughs> is the best for you don't make a mess with your food if you do you'll look pretty rude only take what you oh. need <laughs> and don't be a drip wipe your lips and mind your manners man oh my Jay. Oh man, um, this is a lot of pressure. I don't know if I it's, can do this. It's an no. honor, Jay. <laughs> you you can't go. You cannot go wrong. The, the greatest wrong. video that has ever <laughs> graced this table. Surviving edged weapons is the Citizen Kane of VHS '90s instructional videotapes. This is the most amazing thing we've ever seen on Wheel of the Worst. Maybe the most amazing thing we've ever seen on Best of the Worst as a whole. It's that's, that impressive. It's, it's, it's not it's a joke. Incredible. It's, it's no. an exciting action film. It's legitimately informative. And in the most amazing plot twist that I've ever seen, we discovered about 20 minutes into it that it was made in Milwaukee. <laughs> we'll have to begin by you identifying the suspect's potential for violence. Most of oh, oh, no. oh, that whiskey oh, no. wine. <laughs> Squad 21, go ahead. 
But 21B advised there's a possible local open warrant for DWI on that subject. The flight lives to a round... 94 West Madison. Holy shit! I also saw a sign for 41. What the fuck? Oh, is that County Stadium? Oh, yeah, that was the old stadium. <gasps> what? I don't know where this is. This is a Milwaukee video. This video had everything going for it. It's got, it's got thrills. It's got chills. <laughs> Many chills. Plot <laughs> twists. Yes. Fantastic accents. I told you girls I didn't want you working my street. And I told you to get the fuck out of here. That's the thing. It almost feels like a parody because the accents, the Milwaukee accents, are so thick yeah. that it feels like people doing an accent. It feels like Fargo. The guy in the Camaro that gets pulled over by the stadium? Oh god. And he's like, you know, the cops. He looks like, like the uh, uh the guy that's hanging out in the parking lot in Ghost World. The yeah. guy with the mullet. Like yeah. it, it, it's like that guy, it but is. real. But, but extremely Wisconsin. Yeah. And when the officer, you know, asks for his license, he goes and looks around. I was like, "Oh, here's my fucking license," and it's uh, he's got the knife. He's like, "I got it right here." What the fuck do you want? I want to see your driver's license. What for? Nice. I'm only a block from home. Why don't you let me go? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Intended for law enforcement only, which we thought was a joke. Yeah, we thought that was like, oh, this is just to make you feel like you're seeing, you know, insider information or whatever. But no, no, no. despite the opening prologue that was set uh, in caveman era, <laughs> this is legitimately meant for law enforcement because it's hardcore. It is graphic. Yeah, the, and that's the, the the stuff I didn't like in the video is when we see like photos of real stab wounds, Lots. that shit's fucked up. But there is a lot of real information about how to handle being attacked by someone with an edged weapon. Mm. Homeless person, prostitute. Oh! Left hand behind your head! Oh, okay, you hurt me. Whatever. What have you. Anything? Old man. Yeah, th that's the real takeaway from this is that everyone has a knife and is going to stab you at any moment. And everything is a knife. Everything is a knife. Everything. Everything is a knife. There is a fascinating section of this video where they go through just like, this could be made into a knife. And look where we hit a knife here. And here's all these other. Like, it's, it's, it's Culminating in, oh, you could hide razor blades in your Coca-Cola hat. <laughs> <laughs> no one will even notice. <laughs> Adding to the threat are a host of improvised weapons, sunglasses that can be flicked to poke out your eyes, fish hooks hidden in earrings or stuck through pant Jesus! legs to rip your fingers <laughs> on a pat down, it. boots with protruding spikes, a baseball cap with razor blades sewn to the back. It's so inconspicuous. <laughs> Who so when a cop gets you eagerly. I rip your hat like Rich. The back of Rich's hat could be razor covered blades. with See, razor I'm, blades. I'm scared to come close to you. He could take it and start attacking you. There could be a knife here. You could be. You there should could watch out making fun of his Pac-Man shirt. He can just know. turn around and, and and slash your face up. Just whip that thing off and just pow. It's it's not a, a wonder that cops are paranoid motherfuckers that shoot you to death <laughs> because they show them videos like this. <laughs> oh now fuck you! <laughs> Oh my god, I, I, I was just standing here. You could have some kind of fucking edged weapon. <laughs> Everything is a knife, and everyone has them. And you've probably seen a knife that looks like a ballpoint pen. No. Oh god. But are you familiar with the Mexican sacatripe, used for gutting sheep I have and that. other warm-blooded animals? Mm. Or the butane lighter holder what? that conceals Whoa. a push knife in oh, back? God. Everything's a knife. There's knives in everything. I'm never going outside again. This kind of money clip what? has more of a point to it than just holding no! cash. No! Tonto knives, among the deadliest fighting knives, have incredible penetration capability because of their special oh, blade configuration. Plus, they can be used to crush a human skull. There's also hidden danger in this lipstick tube, popular with prostitutes. <laughs> also sold in the open market is this key sure. that opens into a knife. Take that, Dad. And this bear claw necklace. He's got an edged weapon. There's a there's a fucking cop in here who gets stabbed with a motorcycle's gas cap. Yes. That's him on the front cover. You can you can get stabbed with a medieval sword. Oh God. Okay. Well, we need to establish. 
this movie has many, many reenactments, yeah. and that's when it shines. There's a couple of parts where there's interviews with real cops talking about being stabbed, and we're like, oh, I don't know about this. this is pretty... We fast forwarded through a little bit of that, but those early reenactments, we have the first reenactment, which is the cavemen. <laughs> Where we learn, hey, people can be shitty. They'll, don't they'll, show, they'll, don't show weakness. Don't show, or your fellow man will stab you for your meat. He'll stab you and take your pig's head. That's right. And then we get to modern times and see the modern day equivalent of that, which is a, a, a drunk Midwestern <laughs> with a samurai sword that'll stab you through the fucking door. Police department. Oh, oh, this guy's oh, just sitting around waiting to stab someone. Sorry, I got a warrant for you. <laughs> a warrant for his arrest. Oh, no, you're in there. Come on to the door. Oh, he's got a oh, sword. Yeah. He has a fucking medieval sword. <laughs> well, I guess it's time. <laughs> oh yeah. Nope. Time to bring out the sword. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Watching this video is just like the the most tense thing ever. <laughs> because you know somebody's gonna, gonna get who's, who's gonna try to stab these cops? <laughs> Who? <They're everywhere. laughs> be anyone? This represents imminent danger for sure. All I'm looking for is Milwaukee locations, and we got a bunch of them. Yeah. We're yeah. spotting like uh, Fifth Ward, we maybe see downtown. the U.S. Bank building. You can see the U.S. Bank building. You can see the Allen Bradley Tower. And it's just great to hear all of the accents. Oh, the uh, the woman that was fighting with her boyfriend is just like, you get away from me and tire your shit. And don't touch me. I'm so sick of your shit. Yes! <laughs> That's right! Yes! Yeah, and the cop's like, hey, put your knife down. She's like, I don't want to put my knife down. Yeah. <laughs> Drop the knife. I'm not dropping Drop it right now. I said to drop it. If you have a problem, we'll talk about Did it. Did they find people with the thickest accents possible for I this? I don't know. It's Here fucking you. nuts. Put the knife down now. Oh, <laughs> hey, Pedro, how's it going? Okay. It's good to hear. Well, hello, officers. How are you? All right. How about yourself? It's fine. Good. Yeah, on, on Sundays they got hot ham and rolls, and on Tuesdays they got the cocaine. At the, after the Packer game, everybody come in the back and, uh, and, and, and bag up the coke. Yeah. Don't close the door, though. Leave that open. We'll have the prostitute in the prom dress keep an eye out. The teenage prom dress uh, make a pass at the cop who comes in. <laughs> How you doing? Who's your favorite wide receiver? Cops! Hey, hold that! Stop! Stop! Oh. And then the cops just like, they take position and they just start blowing away the bad guys <laughs> like they're fucking Robocop. Yeah. And this is, this is a. <laughs> it's just like, whoa! This is a videotape that was made yeah. for the purposes of He's showing. Got a knife. To, <laughs> this was made to show to Milwaukee cops. And we've got squibs, we've yeah. got prostitutes, we've got like Coke deals. That, it's that scene, nuts. that scene did not. That belong. scene is where this movie went from being the absolute best instructional video ever made, and it, 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 it went to a level where it is now competing with lethal fucking weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and look, look, unlike, unlike lethal weapon, you know Mel Gibson's gonna be fine. These cops, they They're could die. They're gonna get stabbed in the They're dick. They're gonna get stabbed in the dick. <laughs> You're, you're, Which you're, also happens. You're afraid for these characters. <laughs> There's all sorts of crazy shit going on in Milwaukee I didn't even know about. Because yeah. you know what? After that, 
they took it a step further. There's horror music going on. Open up the door. It's a fucking satanic ritual. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah! Oh, fuck yeah! What? Yeah! 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 Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! This is an interesting yes! twist. Wait, yeah. like you like maybe too? Hell, Satan! Rick, she's got a knife. Drop the knife! That's a ceremonial dagger there. Oh no! Oh my god, it's shorter! <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> we gotta blow away our the, the soul. Oh my god, what the fuck? I fucking love this video! <laughs> In an apartment, which is de uh, depicted on the back of the box. Oh shit. <laughs> All those cops, the, the thing you have to worry about every day, you never know when you're gonna be called in for a rape uh, situation, and it turns out it's not rape, it's a satanic ritual. Man, and the fucking set design in that apartment, they had the Iron Maiden poster up and everything, like, yeah, yeah. happening. And that was when you thought this couldn't get any crazier. Yeah. You thought we had reached maximum crazy with the cocaine deal scene. Yeah. No. And then Satan, <laughs> Satanism. <laughs> Remember the dog walks in and growls and the video pauses? How many sharp objects do you see there? <laughs> How many edged weapons do you see now? This this video is so awesome. It has three three reenacted dick stabbings and then an autopsy photo of an actual dick stabbing. Oh, uh, did you no, look that, at it? A, I had to. No, that was not, was not, <laughs> you didn't have to. I didn't. I looked not, away. No. Also protect your groin region. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even looking. <laughs> no, it was not a dick stabbing. It was a near dick stabbing. Let's not. Oh, was it not in it the? Was, it was over. It was it over was on the thigh. This, but the dick yeah. was right there. Two like it was. It was a two scene thing for me. Number one, it was there was a guy just hanging out by the train tracks, and a cop just walks up and is just like, "What are you doing out here?" Hey man, what are you doing here? Standing around. Well, why are you standing here and not on some street corner somewhere? Free country, man. I can stand where I want. He was like, ah, I was just hanging out by the tracks. He's like, I don't like it. And then he got stabbed. Like, don't just walk up to him. He's like, I don't like how you're hanging out here. Yeah. That's what happens to you. <laughs> ah! Immediately after that, cops just pulls up to a house. The guy's walking out of the house. You know, he's got uh, hunting gear on. What's the problem? There is no problem here. Well, you can go. Nobody called. And the cop's like, what's going on around here? Like, nothing's going on here. And the uh, cop's like, you know, put up your hands. And then the crossbow comes out. The video is telling cops, watch out for Wisconsinites with crossbows. And we're laughing. Then they immediately cut to an autopsy photo of some cop who got hit with a crossbow. It's yeah. not a joke. And then it's you're real. like, you want to throw up. This video is an emotional roller coaster. It's a thrill ride from beginning to end, and the hits don't stop. <laughs> No problem, something with your photo, name on it, that'll be fine. Something with your photo. Yeah. No! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Jesus! Oh, it knocked me out! Oh god! It knocked me! Oh. The deputy who stopped this truck <laughs> didn't see a knife hidden in the crevice between the dashboard and the windshield. While the driver was standing outside, he reached in grabbed the knife, let out a startling martial arts yell, and attacked. The deputy was stabbed nine times in the oh, stomach, arm, shoulder, God damn back, it. and ended up losing a kidney. You can hide a knife fucking anywhere. And if you don't have a knife, and you're a crazy person in an insane asylum, just punch the fucking window. Yeah. EDPs can quickly become the ultimate knife-wielding psycho. And then chop your finger off and fling it at the cops. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it! <laughs> This is awesome! Throw down the knife! Nah, nah, this knife cost me a bunch of money, man. 350 bucks. Vietnam commemorative knife. He's got, I got this, I got this, Viet, I got this Vietnam commemorative knife. I don't want to drop it. That's right. That's drop right. your knife. I don't want to. It's a nice knife. All right, then just place the knife down slowly. It won't get scratched. Slowly place the knife down. All right, I'll do that. I got 16 other knives! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> but that was an interesting segment faster. where they're like, okay, bad guy, cop, right? One foot, okay. Yeah. You die in one second. Bad guy, cop, 15 feet. Bad guy kills you in two seconds. <laughs> bad guy, cop, 50 feet. Then you got time. You got kind of time. It's a 50-50. 50-50. It's you, you got kind of time to maybe take out your gun. If you've already got your hand on the gun, you could probably do Cop, it. Cop, bad guy, length of Lambeau Field. <laughs> you, 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 uh, you, get, you get a shot off. Bart Starr runs for Don't 75. Miss. 75 yards, touchdown, <laughs> leap. <Okay. laughs> There's that incredible shot in that in that bit where they do twice, where like the dude's just out, uh, like by his truck, cop pulls up and he just pulls a fucking machete and is just running oh, for like yeah. 50 fucking feet. Just ah! she, she gets in the car, and drives away. That's what I would do. <laughs> the cop gets like, in the car. Pa- and drives sorry, away. pardon me. I didn't mean to be in your alley. I was just glad I... that she didn't die. Yeah. This video is so awesome. I expected her to ram him with the car. Oh, that would run great. Now, now hit reverse and the gas. <laughs> he's got a knife. You want to make sure he's dead. You want to hit him two or three times. <laughs> if the perp's still reverse moving, and roll over him again. Hit the gas. Go, go over there once. And then oh. get out of your car and pick up his knife and stab him with his own knife. <laughs> I'm gonna die tonight. <laughs> from from just the pure joy I have experienced. <laughs> Karma's gonna come around and stab us all. I'm not gonna last the night. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Horror, action, drama, it has comedy, it, all. it has it all. Everything. Remember that faraway shot where you could see all the way down the stairs yeah. and the cop car pulls up and we're like, we know our cop got stabbed and we can't find him anywhere. And then the camera dollies over in this beautiful dolly shot and there he is laying there. Yeah. We don't even know this cop and we felt so bad for him. Yeah. We felt sympathy for this character that we haven't that met. There's scene though because he's, he's not dead, he's injured. He's actually on the ground bleeding to death while holding a criminal at bay with his gun. It's the most exciting action scene Waiting. I've seen in a movie, maybe ever. Waiting for backup to find him, and it's the most dramatic thing ever. Yeah, <laughs> and we just and we told that story with two simple camera yeah. moves. He's holding that gun, and the the criminal's like slowly reaching for his knife. He's like, you 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 grab that knife, I'm gonna blow you away. Blow your brains out. I think he actually said, <laughs> yeah. Go for it. I'm gonna blow your brains out. And there, there's even a moment in this video where they say, cop, if, if you have been shot through the chest and your lung is in danger of collapsing, you lean your head back and you take out either a piece of plastic or oh, a credit yeah, card yeah. To, to hermetically seal the hole to prevent your lung from collapsing. I learned that, I didn't know you that. You do that. <laughs> so you can live to fight another day. <laughs> To shoot some motherfucker with an edged weapon. <laughs> Maybe a Satanist? I mean, Maybe a, a gang member. A tear came out of my eye and then it, it turned into a bald eagle. <laughs> <laughs> and it flew away. And I said, this is, this is the best video I've ever seen. We gave this a standing ovation. Yeah. That's the first time in best of the worst history. That's true. A legit standing a legit ovation. Standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> Hats off. Hats off.